morning boys and girls, it's Colin back again for Sunday School. Today we're going to be looking at the ninth book of the New Testament, the book of Galatians. We're into December now, so we're going to start singing our uh, maybe a few Christmas ones. We'll do Ephesians. Next week, then the week after, we'll do the Christmas story as it's that time of year. Light of the world. Do you know this song? Get ready to sing. Get ready to sing at home. Three, two, one, and... The world is searching for an answer. A ray of hope in a hopeless world. Who can we turn to? song light of the world this week we were sending out our christmas book to schools all over northern ireland all over the south of ireland and to date we've got requests or orders in for more than fifty thousand of these little booklets full of the word of god and we're going to be sending these out it's the kids children will get them by thursday of this week so we're really really excited about that please pray for they're full of the word of god just give you a wee sample if you can look they've got bible verses in them just telling the christmas story lovely books for children to color in but each page most importantly has got the word of god on the page nice and colorful really well presented and we're, we're just really excited there's so many children in the south of ireland and north of ireland northern ireland but fifteen thousand in the south then about just over thirty-five thousand in the, in northern ireland it's wonderful okay let's uh we're also doing our memory verse. Do you remember the memory verse we've been talking about? We've been doing, let's go over these here. Uh, memory verse, Philippians 4.13, let's say it together. Um, it's I this time, we'll come to the letter I. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. So it's Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. 
Say with me, Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. I could do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Apostle Paul speaking here, and he's saying with me, many things are difficult, many things are not possible, but he says, through Christ, he gives me strength. That means I can do all things. He was so confident with his faith in the Lord Jesus, the Lord Jesus could help him do anything, whether it was studying or schoolwork or sleeping or walking or talking or eating, anything, nothing was too hard. He said, I can do all things through Christ with strength of the peace. Said again, Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. I can do all things through Christ with strength of me. Remember this first when you're having a difficult day, a challenging day. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Let's say the books of the Bible have covered the Old Testament. We're now in the New Testament. We're going to go up to the book of Galatians. Ma Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Galatians. Now we're into the letters that Paul wrote. They're called letters to these individuals, to these churches. It's a letter in Galatia to the Galatian church. And we're going to look at this today. Said again, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Galatians. There we go. Okay, what, what about singing another song? What about the Hallelujah song? How about sang it last year? Really, really, really good song. It's called the Hall. Can you spell the word Hallelujah? Beautiful song. One of my favorite Christmas songs. Hallelujah. Thank you. 
lovely, lovely song, the Hallelujah Chorus. Now we're going to come to Galatians, another great New Testament book. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the Bible. We thank you for the Word of God. And Lord, such a great opportunity here in Sunday School to learn the books of the Bible. And Lord, as we just go through it simply for children, simply for me, we just pray, Lord, that you'll be able to teach us and give us a real appetite to learn about you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. So, got my kids' study Bible again. This time we are in the book of Galatians. So it's Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Galatians. Of course, these are, this is a book in the New Testament. It's actually a letter written by Paul to the church in Galatia, hence the word Galatians. Galatians. The problem was whenever we look at the book of Galatians, why he wrote such a letter, why he was emphasizing such things, there was a problem because it talks about law and grace. Some of these people were relying on the law of the Old Testament was enough to go to heaven. And Paul was saying, no, that's not enough because if the law, keeping the commandments was enough, why then did Jesus die on the cross? Whenever we think of the word grace, um, we can think of um Whenever we say grace, we give thanks for the food. We say grace are God's riches at Christ's expense. So whenever God was freeing us from our sin, there needed to be a sacrifice. And that was the Lord Jesus dying on the cross to free us, to set us free. But many of the people here... Um, there was false teaching coming into the church. They were not applying the Bible as they should. And they were telling people, you must keep the law. You must keep the law. And the people were in bondage. And they never had the freedom that Christ offers with salvation. So Paul then is emphasizing his authority. How he was anointed of God to preach the gospel, to write these letters. And he was uh, teaching about the difference between the law, keeping the law in the Old Testament, and the the grace that we find in the Lord Jesus. So whenever a person gets converted by Christ, they'll want to keep the law, but the law or good works cannot save a person. It's only by trusting in what Christ has done on the cross for our sins. So it's a letter written about Paul, about 49 af years after the death of the Lord Jesus. It talks about Paul defending his ministry. He's uh, criticizing the foolish Galatians and he talks about guarding your freedom and the Lord Jesus. And at the end of the book, just six chapters, he talks about um, the fruit of the Spirit, which is very, very important as well. So we're going to open it up here and find out uh, something. It's, and more or less, it talks about children of God by faith in the Lord Jesus. Forsaking all, I trust him, referring to the Lord Jesus Christ. Christ wants you to enjoy him, to enjoy your walk with him, to enjoy the Christian life, and not to be in bondage. You want to be free from the law, free from your sin, uh, in that sense that puts you in bondage. Whenever Paul uh, starts writing here, uh, really Galatians is about being set free to live the Christian life, being set free to enjoy the Christian life, because the people were in bondage, they were like a chain, impossible to break free from that, and suddenly Paul talks to him, you can be set free, you can be broken free whenever you rely on the grace of God, and God's Spirit will set you free once you believe in Him. Paul starts off by emphasizing there's no other gospel. The word gospel can be simply described as good news because it is good news because people were learning how they can be set free from their sin, set free from the law, set free from, from their bondage, and they're no longer links in the chain in that sense. So Paul talks about there's no other gospel. Whenever we read this here, it's just like all of these all spelt differently and there's only one spelt right. That's another way of saying uh, there's only one gospel. Only one of these is blue, one of these is correct, the right one to take. So whenever we think about um, Galatians, there are many, many verses. Paul talks about Christ, it says, Jesus gave himself for our sin so that he might rescue us from this present evil age according to the will of God and Father. He talks about free deliverance. Salvation is a free gift. There's many things in life you have to pay for and keep on paying and paying and paying. Whenever you take out insurance, when you buy a car or a house or a dog, we have a wee dog and I thought, I'm going to have to get 
neighbour's dog and surely he sees a birdie running after it. He sees a cat, he's chasing it and he sees something else, he just runs and he doesn't stop looking and listen or wait, he just runs. And I thought, I'm going to have to get my wee dog insured, but you have to keep on paying the insurance. But whenever God, Christ gives you assurance, it's a one-off thing he gives you whenever you trust in him. And you don't need to keep going back to get updated every year and every, every month. No, no, it's a one-off payment when Christ died on the cross and it's just lovely. Paul says, but though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you. Let him be accursed. In other words, there's no other gospel and Paul is emphasizing with the weight of his authority uh, that there's no other gospel. There's one gospel, one way to God and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. People will tell you there's many ways to God. There's only one way and there's only one way and that way is Jesus because he said, I am the way, the truth and the life. Paul talks talks about his authority and remember whenever Paul got converted he was elite amongst all the religious scholars but God separated him for three years to sit under the perfect teaching to be able to understand what it meant to be to be a preacher of the gospel so that he could teach the law and explain to these people what it meant he says but I Paul is talking about with the gospel that he that he preached Look at this lovely verse in verse 15. It's, it, well, he it says, first of all, he says, This gospel that I preach is not man's gospel. It's God's gospel. And he says, one thing about the gospel, and you remember this, three things. Christ died, he was buried, and he rose again the third day. Just don't preach the gospel saying, Christ died for your sins. Certainly don't say Christ was buried. Many people die, many people are buried, but whenever Jesus rose again from the dead, proving to be the Son, of God and that's the whole gospel according to the scriptures not my words these are the words of the Bible that's why the scriptures the word of God is so important and so powerful whenever you mention these here Paul then is accepted by the church in chapter 2 he talks about false brethren uh, as if they sneak in to spy out their liberty in Christ Jesus and bring us into a bondage and whenever you want to live your life for God people are going to dress up like a Christian let on they're interested in you but they're trying to trick you and trying to trap you and that's why Paul whenever he went in not just to teach the people to teach the Christian preach the gospel there was other so called spies in the meetings as well trying to trick him and trying to trap him bringing him into bondage by trying to confuse the people so Paul was saying you need to set your trust and your faith in Christ don't rely on the law because it'll put you in bondage whenever you do that so Paul was continually preaching and exhorting and now when something came to his mind he wrote them a letter because he could not be everywhere at the same time and this letter is beautiful we can learn so much about the law and so much about the grace that we find in the Lord Jesus Christ he talks about justification do not be afraid of these big words they're in the Bible whenever you, whenever you hear about them write them down and study them and ask God to teach them to apply them to you and they're beautiful works whenever you think about justified if you're writing a letter on a word document you can write the line, left the line, center, or justify makes it perfect down to both sides. And whenever a person is made perfect in Christ, it says, you're not made perfect, you're not justified by the works of the law. In other words, keeping the law will not make you perfect, will not give you salvation. But, but through faith in Jesus Christ, that means that that's the only way you can be justified. And then it goes on to say, the just shall live by faith. That's how we live our Christian life, by faith, believing what Christ has done on the cross to set us free and to save us from our sins. Paul then went on to say in verse 16, this very verse, read it for yourself, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ. Even when we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law for the works of the law shall no flesh be justified so if you're relying on being a good person you're relying on trying to be a perfect person trying to keep the law keep the commandments the works of the law shall no flesh be justified 
So all these Jewish people in the Bible times, even today, they're trying to dress up nice, say their prayers, read their Bible, but there's no experience of salvation. And in other words, Paul said, you're wasting your time. You're wasting your time because the works of the law shall no flesh be set free, made perfect in Christ Jesus. Paul then says, whenever he thinks about what Christ done on the cross, he said, I've been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. When you become a Christian, the Holy Spirit comes and dwells, lives within you. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Now it's very personal. Very personal for Paul. Very personal for you. For, for me, you make it personal for you. I'm been crucified with Christ. I believe what he done on the cross was enough to set me free. I've been crucified with Christ. I no longer live with my desires, my ambitions, but Christ lives in me. He's my motivation for living, my reason for living, and all I want to do is please him with my life. What a beautiful, beautiful word. In the very end of uh, chapter 2, he says, I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. In other words, righteousness, justification, salvation, if you can obtain all these things by keeping the law, then Christ died in vain. Why then did Jesus die if you being a good person is enough to go to heaven? So many people are thinking they're going to heaven by being a good person. Paul says, why then did Jesus Christ die on the cross? The only reason, because he, he died to set us free from our sin. Without the shedding of blood, there's no remission, no forgiveness, no salvation. He needed to die. He must die. And he did die. And he has died crucified, buried, and he's risen again. When you believe that with all your heart, God gives you a tremendous thing called faith in the Lord Jesus. And it's incredible. Whenever we think about chapter 3, we're just picking out a few beautiful verses here. And it says, the only... This only I want to learn from him. He says to these people who were challenging him about the law, did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by hearing of faith? In other words, the Spirit of God comes upon every believer when you believe God the Father created the world. Jesus the Son was crucified on the cross, but the Spirit of the living God lives within the believer. Paul said, did you receive the Spirit by keeping the law? or by hearing of faith. See, the Bible says faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You can't receive the spirit of God by keeping the law because you're stranger to God and to grace. He gives it to you the moment you believe in the Lord Jesus and ask him to forgive you, ask him to save you. Then Martin Luther, 500 plus years ago, he discovered keeping the law, perfection, all these things, and he couldn't do it. Until he read these words here, mentioned many times in the Old Testament and the New Testament, the just shall live by faith. The just, those who are justified, made perfect, set free, the believing Christian who believe in the Lord Jesus, you live by, not by the law, not by works, but by faith in the risen Son of God. God and children grasp that simple truth the just shall live by faith whenever you receive Christ by faith you will want to keep the law because whenever you break the commandments break the law you will offend God you will grieve the Holy Spirit that lives within you and that's a real challenge of being a Christian and living your life by faith Galatians 3.24 Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us to Christ that we may be justified by faith. I love this verse. It talks about being a schoolmaster or a tutor or a 
teacher. So learning the word of God, learning the laws of God, learning the commandments is never in vain. It's so important because it prepares you and makes you think about God, understand sin, get a big picture of the Bible that we might be justified by faith. So whenever if you keep learning the Bible, when God knocks in your heart's door, open your heart's door wide, let him come in and suddenly everything you've learned will now come to life and will now come to pass and you'll be able to keep moving on with God. It's a schoolmaster to bring us to Christ and will you learn the Bible, the word of God, the law of God, and will make you hungry for searching for Christ that we will be made justified by faith. So the law which put us in charge to lead us to Christ that we might be made just, defied by faith. Chapter 4, Paul's urging the people do not return to bondage. When you're set free of Christ, don't let yourself fall into bondage. Chapter 4, verses 4 and 5. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his Son. Not just at Christmas time, but what's important to understand, the big picture of the Bible, the promise that God had to send his Son. And at Christmas time, we learn the Christmas story of Christ Jesus come into the world. Born of a woman, Mary, born under the law, to redeem, to save those who were under the law so that we might be received adoption as sons. It talks about being adopted. Another beautiful doctrinal word, don't be afraid of it. It says adopted into the family of God, adopted into the, on God's our father. Just imagine a wee child's orphan, no human mother or father that they know of whatever reason, or now they're adapted into your family, they become the new mother and your new father. When you're adapted into the family of God, you become into God's heavenly family. And adoption is not like um, whenever you have a child for a week or a couple of days. Um, adoption is permanent. And when, once you inherit that surname, you, uh, that's your name forever and ever. Once you adopt the name of Christ, that is your name with your name written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. It's incredible when you understand. God opened your heart to understand these beautiful terms found in the Bible. Now, towards the chapter 4 down at the bottom of verse 30, it says, What saith the Scriptures? Whenever people talk to you about God, about Jesus, about doctrines, about the law, about grace, any of these things, ask yourself, what saith the Scriptures? That's why it's never vain, never waste of time to learn the Bible, to learn the Word of God, but always ask yourself, what saith the Scriptures? Get the magnifying glass out, read the word of God, ask God to teach you, to help you to understand, and ask yourself, is it truth? What saith the scriptures? What I'm teaching you today, telling you today, it's God's authority and God's printed page. And I absolutely love it. I'm just giving you an appetite for these books in the Bible because they are incredible. And the more you read them, the more you want to read them. And the more you want to read them, the more you want to read them even more. Paul continues, talks about bondage and about being set free. He talks about... Um, being saved and being uh, uh, converted and born again into the family of God. So we should turn to chapter 5 in the very opening verse talks about, he says, stand fast be firm in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. When he says again he says those people who were relying on the law, they've now understood, they're set free in Christ he says don't go back again to the yoke of bondage because because Christ has set you free. And when he sets you free, you will be free indeed. Something that's so important in the Christian life is a simple lesson to walk in the Spirit. That means walk with the knowledge that Christ is in your heart and in your life. And as you're walking, please God with your life. Bible says, Trust God and do good. Whenever you're pleasing God, you're walking in the Spirit, it says you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. It's the old man, the old nature. Every morning you wake up, every day you go out, your eyes, your ears, your feet will want to walk, your ears will want to hear, your eyes will want to see. And the challenge is not to give in to the flesh, but to fight it. And let the Spirit walk in the Spirit who will keep you from all these things called temptations as you go through the Christian life. 
Again, it says, live by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature. So easy to give in, so easy to follow the wrong way, the lust of the flesh, the sinful nature. And whenever you do, you've got the big fight going on, warring as a spirit against the carnal nature of the human flesh. We're too weak of ourselves to keep our salvation. God keeps us and the secret is to walk in the Spirit. That's why it's never out of date to read the Bible and pray every Every day when you read pray over it and God will give you strength like you need food for your body you need the word of God for your heart for your soul for your spirit to keep you going on with God verse 18 of chapter 5 it says if you be led by the spirit you're not under the law you see the law is coming up again grace sets you free you're saved for by grace are you saved through faith not of yourselves it is a gift of God but now he says if you're led by the spirit you're not under the law so many people try to keep the law to please God and they get all frustrated because keeping the law is not enough to please God you've got to be set free from your sin and your bondage and not be entangled with all these things at the end of chapter uh, 5 it talks about the fruit of the spirit what is the fruit of the spirit love joy peace patience kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness self-control against such things there is no law these are things that, that's basic human nature we always want that we want to have love in our hearts for our neighbors we want to have joy we of course we want peace we want to be good we want to be patient we want to be faithful we want to be gentle we want to self-control but what stops us uh, is, the, is the old nature there's human nature. But when you're filled with the Spirit of God, these things will shine out of you. And that's evidence that you belong to Christ and not under bondage, under the law. It says, Meekness, temperance against such as no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. So when you become a Christian, these sins are crucified and put to death and ask God to forgive you. When he does that, he remembers it no more, forgets all about it. He talks about vain glory. Again, it says, if we live in the spirit, we will also walk in the spirit. Chapter 6, the final chapter. Look at the wee ants. One can't carry it, but the other one will help it. Do you ever notice ants? Not only are they up high in the rope, but they're working together. You'll always see, you'll, seldom will you see an ant on its own. It'll be struggling, but you'll see ants walking, following, helping each other. Bear you one another's burdens that you may fulfill the law of Christ. So whenever you become a Christian by grace, by faith, Shining out of you will be a desire to help other people, to shine for other for Christ by helping, and by doing so you will fulfill the law or the duty of the Lord Jesus Christ. Many verses we can think about. It says, But then let every man prove his own work, whenever we're talking about this here, and then shall he have rejoicing in himself and not another. Whenever you're helping, you're pleasing God, you're helping somebody else, but it will give you a good feeling yourself. We have a saying, when you do something for God, there's a blessing in the doing. But if you don't do, you're not blessed. So whenever you do something before God, helping somebody else, there's a blessing in the doing. For every Every man shall bear his own burden. Therefore, when somebody's getting it tight in school or work, whatever they do, help them along life's way. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. A man will reap what he sows. If you steal from somebody, somebody will steal from you. If you're bad to somebody, somebody will be bad to you. If you annoy somebody, somebody's going to annoy you. You will reap what you sow. So in other words, be nice to everyone, and then somebody will be nice to you. A simple way for me to understand that. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit spirit reap everlasting life so remember as a christian what you do is recorded in god's book and you will reap the reward eternally and god will on judgment day we will give account of the things done the good things and also the bad things let us not be weary and well doing for in due season we shall reap if we faint 
not. It's always good to help each other. Don't be downcast. Um, sometimes we're busy sowing, busy, and there's not much reaping, not much fruit, but God says, keep working, keep sowing, keep at it. And as we have therefore opportunity in verse 10, it says, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are the household of faith with. To be good to everyone, good to your neighbors, but especially Christian individuals, Christian families, people who go to church, Believers, we are to be especially good to those people and look out to them for them, help them along life's way, and God will bless you for doing that. But the scripture hath um which the scripture teaches all these things that we should know how to live out uh, the Christian life and please God as best we can. Final verse for today in verse 14, but God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ by whom the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world. Paul was not boasted, boasting in his own strength his own knowledge, his own experience, quite often he would often say about his experience, his testimony proving he was a child of God. But he said, my boast is not on me. My boast only is in the cross of what Christ has done for me to set me free. And I want you to be set free. And I don't want you to be under the law and bondage but I want you to be set free in the Lord Jesus Christ and that's what we want for people today not the bondage of the law but set free in the Lord Jesus read the book of Galatians for yourself read it slowly ask God to help you to teach him there's so much more you'll find in it let's just finish with another um, song what about a when in manger? Yes, we're thinking about the birth of Christ. We're thinking about the death of the Lord Jesus. So we'll sing this lovely song together. Here we go with the final song, a when in a manger. Think about the words. Can I just speak to over 50,000 children in Northern Ireland and the south of Ireland? Really excited. Do pray for this as it tells the whole story of why Jesus came into the world. The Bible says Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the book of Galatians. Thank you for this tremendous book in the Bible. We can learn so much about justification, about adoption, about grace, and about the law. And we just pray, Lord, you'll use this book to give children an appetite to learn much more about the lovely Lord Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. God bless you and thanks for watching.